My name is Milinko Gojevac. I'm from Delft University of Technology and I work as a system professor in the group of marine systems engineering. And I would like today to well, share a bit of experience that we gained in a large research project in Europe. It was about modeling of ships and ship systems. So what we have actually done was we have adjusted an existing diesel engine model so that it can be suitable and, well, even uh, very useful for the purposes of the project. I was very happy today to see that um, there was a lot of, in one of the sessions this morning, was a lot of talk about different software platforms, um, integration of various types of programs, interfaces, and so on. And these are all problems that we also encountered in this large research project. Now, the name of the project is JULES. It stands for Joint Operation for Ultra-Low Ship Emissions. The goal is to reduce the ship emissions, but not like this, but for real. Um, basically, the idea is by smart integration of various technologies in early stage of design to accommodate all of technology improvements um, that will come in 2025 and 2050, and by smart system integration, provide ships that will have a significant reduction in their CO2 emissions. It's a big project. Uh, we have about 35 partners. We have original equipment manufacturers. We have some of the research institutes. And we have, in the end, uh, shipyards that will integrate all of these technology solutions. I'll show you the workflow. Uh, how does it, what, what was the idea? Um, on top, so I'm using this pen I just got this morning. Um, we have a different equipment manufacturers that are supposed to provide models of their components or their products. We have even uh, fuel cells, batteries, flywheels, a lot of high-tech products. Then their components model would go to a database, which then shipyards would use to extract the component models and design their cases for 2025 and 2050 and by doing that, achieve uh, higher efficiency ships. So, easier said than done, or, well, let's say there are a couple of challenges that were spotted in the project immediately. One of them was that the availability of models was a challenge on its own. You can imagine with um, 15 shipyards from across Europe, that there would be a different component models, different sizes, different types of models that would be requested. And equipment manufacturers were often not able to provide simulation models of all of their components, despite the, let's say, legitimate expectations that the user would have, uh, that actual manufacturer would have a uh, component model. There was also um, a debate going on with respect to the modeling approach. For some, even though the goal would be to reduce emissions, the core nature of the ship types and the application types would dictate the way that this improvement would be achieved. If we look at ships that normally work with steady states um, or just sail from point A to point B, 
for them, a steady state modeling approach would be more useful. If we look at the ships that, for instance, are dredgers, um, are exposed to high transient loads, dynamic behaviors, then for them, they're much more interested in the models that would properly describe the dynamics of the problem. And then after understanding the dynamics, they would be able to successfully execute the improvements. The modeling approach also dictates then the causality uh, and the uh, input and outputs of models. I will show that in the next slide a bit. Um, and then last but not least, there was well, a sensitivity to data protection because we had some of main competitors in the field. And also the fact that different software platforms were used by different participants. The last two we managed to solve with the use of FMUs. FMU stands for functional mock-up units. So the idea is that a model would be written in a C code, compiled into a DLL file that then can be used in any software platform. MATLAB, uh, Excel, whatever. You could exchange different models by having this functional mockup interface and functional mockup units. The functional mockup units are the fact because they're compiled DLLs, then sort of a black box, so there is no data sensitivity. But still, the top three challenges remained. Therefore, the goal that we, or the challenge that we tried to address here, was how to develop a generic modeling approach that can be used for different applications to simulate different models with respect to their sizes, and um, also for steady state and for dynamic conditions. If we look at the diesel engine uh, as an example, there would be two ways how to model it, depending on the information that we want to extract from it. A typical, uh, I would call it naval architecture approach, would be that there is power coming in and we're interested in the fuel consumption at a certain power setting. If we look on the other, hand, diesel engine does not work like that. Um, diesel engine works that the fuel gets injected, some torque is being created together in when the load is a, a connected to the engine, the torque balance is created and based on that the RPMs are defined. So the upper one would be more a steady state approach, while the lower one would be more process oriented approach. Now this, the database models are typical lookup tables that we all love to use because they're straightforward, just reading them. Therefore, they're quick, accurate. Um, yeah, you can find your information rather quickly, straightforward. On the other hand, they do not describe the process inside the component. They have a limited scope. Then for each engine, you need to have a separate table of separate data. And another option is that you have a process-based model. So a model that describes the process in it. It has a wider scope, wider range of application, Accuracy, uh, especially after the last presentation, we can see that it is within the limits of classification societies or even engine manufacturers. But to use them, a certain amount of knowledge is required. It is not just writing in some numbers. Rather, you have to understand a bit about the process itself, and then you can use it. 
This was the existing, um, how we call it, diesel A model. So here we have the engine model in MATLAB Simulink. We have torque coming out. We have here the governor fuel coming in. This would be the load or the propeller, propeller torque together with the engine torque would go into shaft dynamics, integrate the difference, and we would get the RPM. So this model has its process, the combustion process, which in our case is a five-point uh, Seiliger process that simulates the combustion. Here we have pressure, volume, developed in, in uh, 1930s, if I'm not mistaken. And there would be some data about the specific engine that we want to model. The data was hidden in the model, so we thought, well, let's just use this model for the purpose of the project and make it user-friendly and also enable to create a different set of engines as well for all of the users. So that is why we have split it into two parts, the process part and the data part. And both of them were then the separate FMUs, functional mockup units that could run on any software platform. It looked like this. Here we have one FMU, another one, and we kept initially the process-oriented modeling approach. Because we were simulating um, combustion process using first principles, we were able to slowly upgrade and add additional outputs to our model that were of, the, of interest for the project. Some of them was, for instance, um, high temperature cooling water um, temperature, or assuming complete combustion CO2 and SOx. Exhaust temperature as well was added, which was relevant for any, for instance, uh, waste heat recovery systems that could be added. Um, we created different fuel blocks so that different fuel types could be compared and simulated. We added also then um, a feature that power would be actually input by assuming a correlation between the torque and the RPM. And we added an option for NOx emission the D there would stand that it is not first principle based evaluation or assessment of the um, emissions, but rather a database. So it could use a lookup table to try to estimate the NOx emissions. So let's see some of the results. Uh, here we have exhaust temperature with respect to load. Dots are from the project guide, and the blue line would represent the simulated result. There we have exhaust gas uh, mass flow, and again, line represents the simulated results, while dots are extracted from the project guide. Maybe most interesting would be the, the fuel consumption. So here we have specific fuel consumption in grams per kilowatt hour. Here is the load. Again, line are simulated results and green dots are from the project guide. Here we have certain estimates um, efficiency 
indexes, such as thermodynamic efficiency, uh, mechanical efficiency, heat release efficiency, and combustion efficiency. All of those efficiency, efficiencies are actually built in the model itself. So in order to make this one more accurate, we have adjusted the heat release efficiency, the red line, so that it is not constant with respect to the load change, but that it somewhat drops at the higher load. So then here we can see fuel consumption from the previous slide with a constant heat release efficiency and below with variable heat release efficiency. Why didn't we do it like this from the beginning? Well, um, simply constant efficiency was much, much more helpful from the point of view of calculation time. With a constant heat release efficiency, model ran much faster. With variable heat release efficiency, it also runs uh, well, satisfactory fast, but you could see that the computation time was uh, longer than with the constant heat release efficiency. So to test the model, we have then simulated one of the application cases from the project. Uh, it's an offshore patrol vessel with six diesel engines, some of them working in a, in a generator mode, some of them working uh, depending on the operational mode, either in the, as a diesel direct. And we were able to simulate this configuration quite easily and gain the, the following results. Here was the operational profile. I'm not going to read it, but it was clustered in five different loads with respect to time, how much they would run with this load. And we got the, um, the total fuel consumption, which the user was most interested in. So, um, let me see. Initially, none of these diesel engines were actually available for the, for the user, for the application case. The original equipment manufacturers only was, well, a couple of medium speed diesel engines. While using our model, we were able to simulate also high speed diesel engines. So to wrap up, um, maybe one of the points that I would like to pass on to the audience would be that actually first principle models are very useful for everybody. Um, getting to understand your system is often much more beneficial than just getting a pure number out of a simulation model. We were able to create a sufficient engine models for all application cases. And because estimates play such a large role in any simulations, an idea would be to have them as a separate block. Then it would be possible, for instance, to compare different models as well. So what is now possible is that the process block could be replaced with another. So instead of using five-point Seiliger, you could use a, a CFD combustion model or zero-dimension combustion model 
with the same data set, compare the outputs or the computation time, see which one is more suitable. And then if you're aiming for higher accuracy, you could get estimates either from experiments and or maybe from the equipment manufacturer. So that would be it from my side. I think I fit in 20 minutes. <laughs> I see one here. Yeah. Um, so when you when you did your modeling of that offshore patrol craft, were there any emission controls that were applied to that, or was that just sort of a base case? That was a base case, exactly. So this was the base case, the, the as the state of art now, so the way the, the things are now, and in future they want to apply as well a fuel cell, for instance, and then see what would be the the reduction of the emissions. And you've not advanced to that point yet? No, we did not make this, how I would call it, two-part modeling approach for a fuel cell, for instance. But yes, we are hoping to get something like that. The nice thing is that this is all uh, FMUs. These, um, so it is then very easy to share it with everybody that we could put it on our website, for instance, um, a sort of open source models that everybody could use. And will there be a follow-on step then of also validation, presumably? Yeah, yeah, as well. That would, uh, in the project itself, there was um, a measurement campaign planned for validation plus demonstrator case so that we would actually um, build up demonstrators that would demonstrate these um, efficiency improvements that would then be first calculated and actually are calculated with the models and then to build a demonstrator case for instance integrating a fuel cell with a flywheel adding them all up and uh, see what we get. So that's for the next stage. Okay. And do you have a time frame associated with that? Uh, and 2017. Yeah, so that's the, that's the four-year project started in 2013. Um, there is a website as well, jules-eu.pm, uh, I think. Oh, thanks. I'd like to ask you uh, about the future steps. I mean, you're more, uh, more, more or less like already mentioned it. Uh, how about the specific fuel types? Do you have in mind any specific fuel types that you will uh, apply your model? We, as a university, are involved in, when I, when I showed the, the workflow, we are involved in the mid layer. Um, so we are not, the idea is that the shipyards themselves would then develop actual ship models. So I cannot speak on their behalf. Uh, do you have a, a rough picture in mind? Would that be for... Uh, but, but we do that, yeah. Would that be for cruise ships or a, a pilot boat type or smaller kind of... We, within, within the project we have, I think, 15 different vessels, tugboats, cruiser, uh, ships, cruising vessels, dredgers, um, yeah, all kinds, uh, really, um, different boats. Well, we, we prefer 100% accuracy, <laughs> but... Uh, so, but uh, as I saw, you use an uh, approach that doesn't provide 100% accuracy. Uh, yeah, 
So that is, well, it is quite close. It's even, even if I look at the previous one, at the, the constant heat release uh, efficiency, you would see that it is all within 5% accuracy. Yeah, yeah, no need for skepticism, really. And in all, in all project guides, you would see a disclaimer that even engine manufacturers claim that the data is within 5%. So, if you just took this point and draw a curve, you would get a better uh, approximation of continuity. Absolutely right. But then you would not be able to get, for instance, a temperature. So that, that is the added value of simulating the process. Because if you simulate the process, then you know the pressures, you know the, the volumes, you can simulate the temperature, you can simulate the cooling water temperature based on those processes you can get then um, something about emissions and so on and so on so there is this typical um, doubt or dilemma between understanding and, and processes and the database models that are then um, coming from manufacturers and just used in everyday work Yeah. How did you arrive at that nonlinear curve? You use a, a constant curve to begin with. And yeah. Is yeah, we just uh, adopted a function, I think, a polynomial. Uh, From data. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually, the model would um, derive the estimates based on input parameters from the data. Yeah, so. That's what is the uh, real uh, expertise of us or our uh, in the model itself. Yeah. Just to clarify my understanding for the next step for validation, are you going to actually instrument the uh, actual vessel and correlate that data back to the derived data from? That is the idea, yes. Okay. But it depends on the entire project. Um, we are applying for these demonstrators. Uh, we are now pro submitting the proposals. That goes because it is an EU, uh, European Union research project, and it goes to EU Commission. They get to evaluate certain demonstrators. But we have high hopes with um, validating them. Yes. The sulfur content, lower heating value, and I would have to look further for, for uh, I don't know it by heart, but those so two. Probably <laughs> not going to deep these things within the, the chemistry. No, the no, chemistry. no, exactly not, no. But if there would be a model that would do that, then it could be easily substitute in the process part, for instance, and then compare it exactly with this one, for instance, or another one, so that a user can decide in early design stage which model to use and later on then, um, well, work the way around it. We would like to do that. We did not do that, but yeah, we want to try to do that. Yes. All right. Well, uh, no more questions. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks.